And I'm Becky Bowen, and I'm the youth specialist at the Madison branch of the Madison County Library System. And I'm so glad that you could be here tonight. You know, we live in unique times right now, and the library is ready to help our community. We wanna make sure that our students succeed. And that's why we're having this program. Um, not only this program, we, we also offer other programs online. We have curbside hours and lots of other services during this time. So if you wanna find out more about that, you can look at our um, web page or our Facebook page or give us a call. Um, well, many of you are here tonight because you're trying to decide what type of school is the best option for your children. And some of you may already homeschool and just want to hear stories about people who actually homeschool their kids all the way through high school. Tonight, the panel's not going to be recommending one way of schooling over another. We know there are benefits uh, in all the choices, and we just want to share our experiences with you from homeschooling. Um, now, uh, in, in the spring, a lot of people did virtual school. You know, that's if you were in public or private school, that was your option. And homeschooling is different than that. With homeschooling, um, you, you get to choose the curriculum and you get to look at the learning styles of your children and their interests um, and just see what kind of curriculum fits you and, and your family, as opposed to watching what is uh, at the school. They're both very good options and you just have to decide, you know, which one would work best for you. Um, Let's see here. Also, I want to let you know beforehand, just so I don't forget, um, after this meeting, starting next week, Tuesdays at 3.30, I'm going to start what's called the Homeschool Teachers Lounge. And it's going to be a Zoom program. And I'll be there and any other moms or dads, whoever's homeschooling, that want to come in. And it'll just be kind of a place where you can ask questions, we can help each other, share ideas, and encourage each other on this homeschooling journey. And um, I also have a homeschool resource sheet. Uh, the panelists have come up with some resources that really have helped them over the years. And I have that information for you. And either if you want to join the um, Homeschool Teachers Lounge or get a resource sheet, my email address is bbowen at mcls.ms. And um, so I just want to make sure I, I got that information in for you. Now, our panel. Who is our panel? They are moms who have homeschooled their children all the way through high school. And we have all known each other through the years and have been supporting each other on this journey. As a matter of fact, we are those moms who would pick up the phone and say, I'm having a rotten day, meet me at the park. <laughs> or we could have a, a good day and say, I'm doing a Kings and Queens unit. You wanna come and have a royal feast with my family. So we, you need a support system when homeschooling. And, uh, and these are some friends that have been there along the way for me. Um, I'm going to start the introductions of our panelists with the woman who homeschooled the longest, um, Cheryl Reese, wave Cheryl. <laughs> she is homeschooled for 33 years and has eight children. All right, so everyone breathe. <laughs> Cheryl, you the most. <laughs> um, all right, <laughs> next. <laughs> That's right. Next, we have Gretchen Franklin. She's homeschooled for 20 years and she has five children. And Gretchen, you can wave for us. Um, we have Cindy Lee. She's homeschooled for 20 years. Do you want to give us a wave, Cindy? And she has three children, but a little asterisk to that. She has a set of twins, which of course puts in its own challenge. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, I homeschooled as well. I homeschooled for 13 years, one all the way through high school and one through seventh grade. Now, come her eighth grade year, I had to go back to work full time. So she went to public school for two years and then finished out um, her high school in the private school setting. So I have experience in all uh, three schools and, and so does she. And um, I respect all and have been thankful for each one. Um, let's see. So, uh, all right, now we're going to briefly share our experiences and cover these questions for you in our introduction why we homeschooled our children, what a typical day looks like, <laughs> what we learned in the process, and our thoughts about homeschooling in a pandemic. So I'm gonna start with my homeschooling story. Back in the 1990s, when I moved to Mississippi, I had never heard of homeschooling. And I first heard of it this way. I was in church and I saw a woman in the hall who had several children. And she was an acquaintance of mine. And um, I asked her just making conversation. And I said, you know, where do your children go to school? And she said, well, I homeschool. And I looked at her in all sincerity. And I said, why? 
and I'd never heard of it, and I had no idea why someone would want to do that. And she went and told me all about it, and I walked away from her thinking, I will never do that. And sure enough, <laughs> sometimes the thing you think you will never do is the thing you are led to do. And so I started kind of researching it. And as I was doing that, there was one curriculum that really stood out to me that I thought, you know, this looks pretty good, but it's really expensive. Well, one day a friend of mine calls and said, you know, my kids are older, but I have this curriculum for kindergarten through third grade and you can just have it. Of course, it's the curriculum that I was hoping for. And I thought, I guess I'm supposed to homeschool. And that's, that's how I got started in it. But I, as I was researching it, I decided I wanted to homeschool my kids because I wanted to know what they were learning. And I wanted to make that decision what they would and wouldn't learn. I also wanted to pass my faith onto my children. I was bullied in school and I didn't want that experience for my kids. Thankfully, when my daughter did go out to school, she had very good experiences in both the public and private school. But those were some of the reasons that I looked at and uh, why I chose homeschooling. The next question was, what does a typical day look like? There is no typical day. <laughs> at my house, a lot, a lot of it depended on what everyone's attitude was during that day, <laughs> whether it was a good day or a bad day. Um, it also changed depending on the curriculum that I used. I've used many different types of curriculums over the years, and uh, some are literature-based, some offer a more classical approach, some are unit studies, and some are traditional. And after years of trial and error, I finally found that curriculum that fit me. And it's called KONOS, and it's spelled K-O-N-O-S, and it's a unit study. And in a unit study, everybody's studying the same subject at once. So our whole family, it, it just became such a family project. And with this particular curriculum, it's, this, it's a big book. And a big book will cover a couple of years. It's very inexpensive to do. And um, in that book, if, let's say um, you're covering you know, the Mayflower journey. And you would have a section that told you what to do with the little kids, something with the elementary age kids, and then the teenage kids. And they'd give you hundreds of ideas that you could pick from. So when we did the Mayflower, we became pilgrims. My kitchen floor was the Mayflower, and we packed our belongings for the trip in a wooden chest that I had. We baked hardtack, which is the biscuits that they took on the trip with them. And uh, we, we had a blast. And we researched it, and we just did all kinds of things uh, to go along with that. And the whole family got to be involved at their level. And to me, I just thought, you know, um, if they had read two pages in a social studies book about the Mayflower, they would never have experienced what we did. And, and we had so much fun with, with that type of um, curriculum. And it dawned on me as I was learning to do these unit studies um, and, and kind of make learning so much fun, that there are so many facts in this world that there is no way that you can learn all the facts. You know, you, you think pump in information and information. But if you give your child a love of learning, the world becomes their oyster. They will succeed. I had two main goals in homeschooling. I wanted them to have a love of learning so that they could do research and, and do it on their own and be excited by it. And I wanted to develop their character. That was what would be success for me. Um, next question is, what did I learn in the process? I learned there are pros and cons to everything. <laughs> um, I don't want to make this homeschooling journey sound like it's all rosy um, and that it's the right fit for every family. Every child is different. And I would have to say I learned this in hindsight, unfortunately, um, but you really need to take regularly an emotional temperature is what I call it, of your children individually and of your family as a whole. Um, if a child has extended periods of loneliness or depression or your relationship with your child is really struggling over an extended period of time, I think it's worthwhile to consider is homeschooling really the best option for my child? But it's also, so if you're going to public school or private school, if your child has extended periods of loneliness or depression, or you're struggling in your relationship, that's another time to kind of take that emotional temperature and see, is this a good place for my child? Would it be better to bring them home? But that's something that I learned um, that, that I wish I had realized as I was going through the process. One of the big benefits of homeschooling though is I found it to be very life friendly. If we had to be out late for a basketball game or a tennis match, we slept in the next day. If we wanted to go on a trip we went and we took either took school with us or we made up for the time later and that was really nice I also learned that you don't have to finish everything don't pack too much in an, into an academic day 
the first curriculum that I chose for my little first grader, she was schooling to like 3.30 in the afternoon, this little first grader straight through school. That poor thing, um, which may be why she wanted to go to school for a while. <laughs> but, um, but, but, you know, foster that love of learning. You know, you have to get the basics in the math and the grammar and the reading and all that, but all the other, just whatever you get to, you get to. And I used to teach in both private and public schools. And we always said, if you finish 80% of the book, you finished. And I don't know if that's a, a rule or an unspoken rule or what it is. But for me, with homeschooling, if it's the end of May and everybody else is out for school and your kids are going to be really bitter if you go to finish that 80, 90 percent, you know, if, if they've done their learning and it's been a good year, you know, my opinion is, you know, just just call it a day and, and have and relax. But um, Another thing, uh, one thing that's great about homeschooling is you can introduce your kids to all kinds of activities and see what they like and give them plenty of time to pursue their interests. We were really involved in the Victor's Homeschool Sports Program that starts, when we were in it, it started in seventh grade. I don't know if it starts in sixth or seventh grade now, but we were involved in tennis and softball and uh, track and basketball and, and just loved it. Um, if this is your first time homeschooling, start with just a few, you know, that first day of school, don't try to do it all but just start with a few subjects at a time that you know they'll enjoy and, and uh, you know, get, have some success. And uh, if you're having a bad day, you know, there are days that you just say that's enough for that day. You know, you can't do that every day, but there are days that, that are like that. Um, and enjoy your children. You know, if, if you're not enjoying your children, then, then it's, you know, you're missing out on a lot. But so those are just some of the things I've learned. And then my thoughts about homeschooling in a pandemic. Um, I imagine that some of you have been waiting to see what the public and private school options were gonna be. And then deciding, you know, well, maybe this homeschooling option because it looks like it's a little bit volatile. You know, and I know some great teachers who are really working hard to make it as good as they can be. And I, I really respect the schools. It's a tough position to be in. But if you do decide to homeschool, don't rush into it. When I started homeschooling, I had the luxury of lots of time to research it. You may not have that time. But take your time. If it means you start on October 5th instead of September 17th, so be it. In the meantime, let your kids check out some nonfiction books from the library. You know, give them other projects, science experiments, things like that that you can just do and, and have fun with until you're ready and you feel confident because you don't want to start nervous. You want to have confidence when you go into it. And you know, once you find that math curriculum, then start with that one and, and go from there. Um, but uh, and, and of course, finding people who can support you along the way really helps. And that homeschool teachers lounge, I, I hope to be a help to anybody who, who would like it to be and, and we can become a little community. But that's my experience. <laughs> and um, I'm going to go over to Gretchen. And Gretchen, I'd love to hear, we all would love to hear your story. Okay. Hey, everybody. I'm Gretchen Franklin. And like Becky said, I have five kids. Um, they're ages 13 to 24. And we have homeschooled the whole way through. Everybody um, has homeschooled. And um, my oldest graduated from college and is heading off to do a master's in music. And I've got two at Mississippi State right now. And then a senior in high school this coming year and a freshman in high school. So um, like I said, we've done it all, all our years. Um, we decided to homeschool because we had seen some um, some of our good friends were doing it back before we even had kids, and we just really liked what we saw in their family, and um, we just saw them really enjoying it, and so we thought we'd give it a try when uh, my oldest was a kindergartner, and um, so we just kept on. It's been a really good um, experience for our family, and um, we also, um, I just felt like observing that family, it, it um, might yield our family to be a closer knit family. And also we wanted to pass our faith on to our kids. So um, I, before kids was, I was an accountant. And so I didn't have any teacher training whatsoever. So that's not a, um, a necessity. Um, but I really did enjoy teaching my kids um, when they were younger. And then as they get older, they, become self-learners and just my job is less and less, but, um, but I really enjoy teaching them. Um, one of the things that was also really beautiful about our homeschooling is just seeing that um, kids um, interact with each other and having um, 
somewhat closer relationships because they've spent all this time together in school together and they weren't separated, you know, in different schools and classes. So that's been kind of um, a great thing to, to watch along the years. Um, we've always been involved in our church and other activities. So they never had um, a lack of, you know, friends and we had great homeschool support, you know, like um, the other panelists, you know, we've just known each other forever and the kids um, all had, you know, great fun times. Uh, Becky led a PE years ago. And so that was uh, great for our kids to get outside and do some outside activities. Um, we also have really liked the um, being involved with the Victor's Homeschool Sports. And we've done track and basketball for years and still doing that with my um, two that are left at home. Um, just all those activities provided um, much needed support for me and you know, great friends for the kids. So um, that was just uh, a necessity just to have that support. Um, also, something that helped me along the way um, with homeschooling was uh, my kids attended the Friday program, which um, started starts at kindergarten and, and it went to sixth grade for a long time. Now I think it's seventh and eighth maybe. Um, but it was just a great, um, like one day a week where I had a little bit of a break and the kids could um, go and be with some friends and do some things they wouldn't do at home. Like I never did art. I didn't do much elementary science. So they did some science there and um, a music and being in some like a play or two, you know, like a musical production kind of thing. So um, the Friday program was a great um, addition to our homeschooling. Um, a typical day, uh, would start about eight. Um, I'm a morning person, so we just got up as if we were, you know, going to school. Um, our, my kids each had like a clipboard and they would have a list of things they had to do each day and each subject. And I would just work with each um, one, just kind of rotate through. And then we do some things together, like read alouds or um, history we usually did together. Um, let's see. Um, I was very uh, task oriented. I wasn't as fun as Becky, but she let me join in her fun. So, <laughs> so anyway, one of my friends years ago said, um, I really needed to, uh, it was okay to let them have a recess. Like I really had to be told that because I was just like, I got to get this done. We got to get this all done today. And, um, but you know, they need, they need the break and I needed the break too. So I just, um, flexibility is a key word in homeschooling and not being too uptight when things don't get done. There's always tomorrow. Um, they're, they're learning a lot. Uh, and um, yeah, it's all good. Okay. One thing I thought of, I think Becky mentioned a little bit, but um, for, if you're doing this, uh, if you're thinking about homeschooling just because of a uh, pandemic um, and you choose to do it, just, um, I would just encourage you to really enjoy your kids and um, get to know them in these months of homeschooling and um, take some trips that you couldn't do else otherwise, you know, this year. Um, it's just, there's so many learning places you could go to learn history things or other things, you know, um, different science museums around the country or whatever, you know, it's just a great time if, if you can and if the pandemic, you know, allows. <laughs> um, you know, just to really enjoy the time and, and, um, and, you know, just travel if you can. I just, I just thought the times that we did that, it was, it was great. So, um, I hope we can be an encouragement to y'all tonight. Thank you so much, Gretchen. Um, Cindy, we're going to head over to you. Hi, my name is Cindy Lee and, um, Y'all sound so much more organized in your thought processes than me. But um, Becky gave us a, a list of questions, so I'm just gonna kind of go through those. Um, I have three girls. Um, I have Anna is 24, and then the twins are 19. So I'm three with homeschooling. And um, I did it from kindergarten on up. I, I loved it. I actually loved it. We, Jim and I had, when we were dating, it's interesting because when I was single, I was about 23, my Sunday school teacher 
said she was going to homeschool her kids. And I thought that is the weirdest thing I've ever heard of in my life, you know? And um, so we all have those stories, but years later, um, the Lord just ch changed my heart. And I, when Jim and I were dating, that's my husband, we started talking about um, homeschooling then. And we knew a family and just uh, loved what we saw. We loved um, the things they got to do. And, um, we love that, that they get to set their schedule and, and not the school. So um, for us, some of our reason for homeschooling was we just wanted to get to spend more time with our kids. Um, I wanted to get them in my non-tired hours and um, have a chance to just teach them what you know I thought was important and really just to be with them a whole lot. Um, it's, it's interesting, my um, Jim's boss said one time, um, and he did not homeschool his children all, but he said, you know, 18 years is just not enough time to teach them everything they know, you know, <laughs> need to know. And so that was our main reason for um, doing it. I did not have a um, teaching background, but I knew I was starting with kindergarten. So I kind of felt like I could probably do kindergarten. I said, I probably can add and subtract and I probably can um, teach them to read. So uh, you, you start slow, you start slow. Um, so, what was a typical homeschool day like? Well, for us, I'm like Gretchen. I'm a morning person. I mean, I have a friend now that she says she laughs when she goes up. Oh, Cindy's up because I'm texting her at 630, but I'm a morning person. But so we did. We started right after breakfast and I kind of had a schedule for each of them. You know, I had my schedule and their schedule and we would kind of just work through that. And I wasn't like I read the scheduling book and, and this lady like did every 30 minutes and I was like, nah, that would drive me insane. I can't do that. We just kind of had kind of blocks of time and uh, we would kind of go through that. And um, I just, from the very beginning, we kind of said, okay, school first, you know, then, then we'll do other things. So we tried really hard to get through, you know, by one or two. And, um, and I mean, in the early years, I mean, it was really, you know, you could get kindergarten done and out you know, hour and a half or something, but, um, so we would get through really early. Now I had it a little easier, I think, than my friends, because I had three children, but two of them were in the same grade. So, you know, I was always doing them kind of together, but, but at some point I had to start doing them separately because they have such completely different learning styles. And, um, one of them just wanted more time. One of them, you know, wanted to speed through and that kind of thing. But, so, um, so that was kind of what we did. And we, we would do a lot of um, activities in the afternoon. And I had one daughter that um, just had a real love for ballet and that kind of took over her high school years. So um, she, she would get through and at one o'clock and then she was gone doing ballet. And that, that's what she does now. She's a professional ballet dancer. Um, so that was, that was interesting didn't think I'm, you know, I'm math, so I'm a math person, so I have all these artistic children, and, and I, you know, I don't, I'm not the fun parent at all, but anyway, they're all artistic, but um, we, we did, I did just different curriculums, you know, I did some of the traditional, we tended to go with, like, some literature-based curriculums, because we all love to read so much, so um, we would just read aloud, I mean, do not, tell my children I told you this, but we actually read aloud to them till they were about like in the eighth grade because we would just love to read aloud, you know, until finally one day they said, you know, mom, we really don't want you to read aloud to us anymore. And I was like, okay, because they, they said, mom, we can be so much faster. We just let us do it. And so I said, okay. But um, anyway, we, we love that. So we read just lots and lots of books and um, I wasn't always the fun parent, but we did do some fun things too because they were all into American Girl. So I remember we had an American Girl Day and they all dressed up and we, you know, uh, got a pumpkin and dissected it and used the pumpkin seeds and, you know, all that stuff. So we would do a lot of fun stuff, things like that. And then we got to watch the American Girl movies after it was. So that was kind of our typical school. Let's see what else. Okay. The best advice I would give would be, there was two things. One, the lady that, um, remember I said there was a lady that was homeschooling her children. I thought that was the weirdest thing. But when I said I was going to homeschool, she said to me, don't become a homeschool snob. And um, that really helped because it's real easy to kind of get that attitude of like, oh, I'm homeschooling my children. I'm just, you know, 
Um, and so that was good advice for me because like Becky said, um, there's different different strokes for different folks. Um, there's just, you know, there's times you can do things and times you can't and, and not to, you know, think you're better than anybody else. And I think the other thing I would say is th this is going to sound like opposite opinions, but I would talk to moms a lot and, and get advice because moms that have been there can give you good advice. But on the flip side is don't compare too much because it is so easy. You know, I would hear what so-and-so was doing and I would start freaking out because I wasn't doing that. And then I would hear what so-and-so was doing. And it's, it's real easy to start comparing and feeling like you are messing your child up or that your child is just missing something. And, and they're not because, you know, not every school can give a child everything they need. So it's, it's okay. And I was like Becky, you know, I wanted them to have a love for learning. I wanted them to love to learn and I wanted um, character because um, none, nothing else matters if they don't have character. So um, that would be my two pieces of advice. And um, what, what advice would I give to someone suddenly looking to homeschool? Um, I, okay, two things. One, I I teach at St. Augustine now. It's a, a private school, and I teach math. And when the pandemic happened and we had to go um, online, and, and I had people say to me, oh, I've hated it. I would never homeschool. And I would say, schooling online is not the same thing as homeschool. I mean, what I was doing with my students at St. Augustine online was not what I was doing with my kids. It's, just, you know, I was doing it just online and, and, you know, with homeschooling, you're right there with them. You've picked out the curriculum, um, you're in person. Um, so it's, it's not the same thing, but, um, I, I second what Becky said about just giving, them a, giving yourself a little time. Um, you know, one thing I did is I looked at a lot of curriculum magazines. I, um, I read some books and, um, and depending on the age of your children, I mean, if they're really young, um, you know, it's not going to be that, that tough. And, but as they're older, if, if you're like got a sixth grader and you're trying to do it, you know, it, depending on your situation, you might need to do some things online. Um, we didn't do very many things online. I, we did most of the things, you know, just, I had the books and stuff, but, um, you know, if your work situation is such that you, you have to do that, that, you know, there, because I had a um, child and she's completely changed her mind now, but when she was, you know, eight, nine, 10, she said, I just don't think I want to, teach my child math, you know, I, I don't want to homeschool because I don't want to teach my child math. And I said, well, don't let that be your reason for not homeschooling because there are other ways to get around that. You know, if, um, if you think you want to homeschool except for that, we, we can, we can find a way out of that, you know, um, but she's since changed her mind, but, um, as children seem to do, <laughs> you know, they flip flop all the way. But, um, so my oldest is, um, she she did not go to college. She just um, went straight into dance and ballet. And then my other two, they're at Mississippi College now. I, in fact, I moved them in today. And um, we're hoping they get to stay there because they had to come home last, last year because of the pandemic. But um, so that's it for me. Thank you so much, Cindy. Appreciate it. Cheryl, our, our veteran here of 33 years. <laughs> Let's hear your story. Uh, um. I had a similar experience in the sense that early on our marriage, I met this family that homeschooled and I had never heard of homeschooling and they had this goal. Their children were going to be doctors and all these lofty goals. I was like, Oof. you know, I never, I just thought it went in my mind, but I just didn't think about it anymore. But my husband was working on a graduate degree and we lived in Georgia. And uh, so I had, two, if, when I get to kindergarten, five-year-old, and then I had a three-year-old, and uh, I looked at what the school was going to teach, and my son, he already had down that whole kindergarten curriculum, and it was for the whole day, so I was going to lose him the whole day, and I thought, well, and he already, he already knows most of his curriculum, and he had a very hard time standing alone. I, some friends gave me some tapes, and I read some books about uh, character, and he just had the worst time, you know, he had bunk beds in the room and I go in there and they're always jumping on the bunk beds. And of course I had no jumping on the bed, you know? <laughs> so for those reasons, uh, 
we decided to try it. We'll just try, you know, I like to do one year and I'll evaluate after it was over. And I also did a, a integrated curriculum like Becky did. And I loved it and I learned so much. I felt embarrassed. There's so many things I had forgotten. So I, and I just, it was so fun. <laughs> so after that year, I'm like, well, do it again. Now my firstborn and my secondborn were like black and white, not in the sense of uh, evil or good, but they were so opposite. So it was, it was hard. And my firstborn was very bright. So I'd say that is, since I had such opposites, it was a great thing to homeschool because my firstborn, I was think, thinking of all these ways to challenge his mind. Like he started a newspaper and, and he did an extra reading where my other one was really hands-on. Um, and then of course I added six more down the line. <laughs> so I did the eight, but my older two were older before this last six came along. So it was a very short amount of time that I did than all eight of them. But one year, uh, since we've been here, we've been living in Mississippi for uh, 17 years, and my husband got very ill. So I did put them into private school. And it, I was just so thankful because I just, I just couldn't handle everything. So I was very thankful for the, the love they had for my kids. They took them in, and uh, they did get, get a good education. And then after that year, we, we took them back out again. Um, my philosophy of education, I, I can't just say the whole thing, but basically I love the saying, um, education is not filling a bucket, but lighting a flame. And so I wasn't trying to have them memorize everything. You can never learn everything there is to learn, but I wanted them to love to learn, to have a inquisitive mind. And I tried to help them learn. Uh, we love, oh, my kids love to go to the library. First time we went to the library, Becky, they said, uh, wow, they're giving us these books. <laughs> they love the library. So we use a lot of the resources of the library. Um, so anyway, so I just wanted them to, to love to read, to learn to investigate, and just, to, you know what, I can, I can be anything. It, it, we're not limited by a box. We're not trying to accomplish that they have to uh, be, you know, learn. I mean, I did follow curriculum, but I wasn't so set that they, if they were really interested, like my son loved to write. So we, we spent extra time on writing or my son liked to uh, build. So we worked on building another son loved Lego. So I just was tried to give them freedom for what they were uh, good at. I used lots of curriculums. I probably did that some for the kids, but I didn't, you know, after 33 years, I, you know, I don't want to get bored. So I'd love to learn to read new books. So I tried a lot of different curriculums and they all have advantages and disadvantages. When I started, there was two curriculums. It was so easy. By the time I got my daughter, my last daughter, she's in her third year of college. There is untold number. It, it's much harder now. One thing I forgot to say too was, I, I, I just feel for moms and parents and young people now, it, it's hard. Uh, what you're going to do. I, I work uh, in a mission in Jackson and so many of the parents are concerned because their kids are home all day alone because they're both working. So it's, it is hard times now. And, and I would agree with what everyone else said to just think through what you're doing and research and just take, take the time so you do feel comfortable. Every, every option of education has its good things. So you have to figure out what works for you and your family and, and if you have a husband with your husband. Um, we, we pretty much were uh, scheduled people. That's, that's how I am. I'm organized. I'm scheduled. So whether they liked it or not, that's what we did. <laughs> and I had to get a lot through. So I, I they fixed a schedule for myself and each of the children. But on the other hand, we were flexible as new things came in life. Because at different times during the years, we were in homeschool groups or we were in uh, co-ops. And so we would just change our schedule for a while so we could participate in that. Other times we were in groups and the other people would teach them for a while. We did that. And then when uh, Victors came along, my son was one of the very first Victors when they played uh, football, then uh, the, they had to leave in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> oh, you know, you couldn't, I couldn't get everything done by one o'clock. So my kids were great. They loved it so much. They went, they came home and took their shower and then they'd finish their last hour when they got home. So homeschooling is it's great because you could just be so, be, uh, have a lot of flexibility. Our family loved to take trips together. And my husband, uh, with his job, he would travel. So we, 
did our, you know, I prepare ahead of time all the different things we could learn as we went along the road trip. And uh, we'd read books related to that. And believe it or not, I did read to my kids through high school. Not every one of them, but it was, it was interesting. We play this game and all of us, we, it was like we were reading our, each other's minds because we read the same books together. But my husband, he could never get it. He felt so jipped. And I said, well, honey, you got to start reading books with us. So then when we take trips, he would read the books and then he could kind of start getting where we were coming from. We'd say one word and everybody would get it because yeah. we had read the same things together. We moved a lot. So I didn't take very much time off for mom time because I was always packing or moving. My husband was adventuresome. Um, but that was probably one thing I would say is really important. Uh, my young moms at home school, I just, I, I just, I'm proud of them. They are willing to take a day off here, a weekend off, just a mom time. And I think to think about what helps you to be renewed, what will help you to be a better mom, what will help you to be a better wife and a uh, homeschooler, you just need some time off and teachers get time off. And I really didn't ever allow myself that. So I think that was a big lack in my life. And my husband was an important part of my life, so I tried to take time for him. It's easy to get so involved that you're only thinking about all the kids and, and you just leave your husband out. Well, you know, that's not good for the marriage. So I think it's important to take time to be with your husband as well. And I think to not be too hard on yourself. Uh, some of my kids said, oh, mom, I wish you'd read us, had us read more classics. And I, another one, I wish you had made us take more, uh, more tests. So, you know, you're never going to do it perfect. You just do the best you can. And I guess I trusted that God put the kids in my life that I was supposed to have. I'm kind of a creative person. And so I'd see my kids take off and creative things. And um, I, you can't be, you know, I don't have a math mind like Cindy. And I'm not a scientist, but I, I used other people and resources to help fill in the gaps. Like my husband's a scientist. He'd bring home eyeballs and sheep brains and some of my kids were like, ah, oh, you know, they were like, close their eyes. But it was so cool, all the different things we did on our kitchen table. And uh, we included other people as well in that. Uh, I guess two things I think helped me was I had a regular weekly planning night. Uh, so you're thinking about I'm planning for a lot of people. Uh, so maybe everybody doesn't have to do that. But everybody, Monday night, uh, I fixed dinner and then I was gone. I went in my bedroom and everybody kind of honored that. But that helped me to think through my week. Um, and like I said, we did creative curriculum. So I planned field trips, I planned activity days. So that helped me to feel more on top of things. Everybody might not need that. But the other thing was on Fridays, now I love this day, but my kids tell me they didn't like it as much, but that was our accountability day. So I'd spend 45 minutes to an hour with each child to make sure they get their math done. Have they memorized what they're supposed to memorize? Have they finished their reading? And uh, everybody knew that, so I guess that's why they didn't like it. But I liked it because I got to <laughs> going on their brains. What, what were they thinking about? And I get to read their papers, and we could talk about it. So um, I enjoyed that. Uh, I was going to say that you might find yourself being a working mom. Can I ever homeschool when I'm working? And I would say it's challenging. But, you know, we only had one income in our family. My husband was a, a researcher, and then he was a teacher at Bellhaven. So I did work uh, some part-time jobs when we did it. I had a couple businesses and my kids participated. I, I paid them, but they learned a lot through that. So I think depending on the, the needs of your children, you know, their education, where they're going, whether they're independent or not, that would help you think through if you could do it if you're working. What I find though is the older they got, the more independent they got. And that's why I enjoyed my accountability time. So I would still know what they're thinking, know what they're reading, what are their struggles? Um, because that really did prepare them for college. And uh, just to encourage you, I do not have a teaching degree either. Uh, and I think that can help and it can hinder because we were able to be freer. You know, we didn't think, well, we got to do it this way. We were able to be more out of the box. Um, but I would just say that uh, seven of my kids all went to college. My, um, my firstborn, he got his master's. He's an a organist and choir director, and he also has a side job of um, repairing, doing uh, different 
trim carpentry and things like that. And then my second one, uh, <laughs> he hated school, to be honest. <laughs> So it was a challenge, but he was great. He's really good with his hands. He's good with people. So instead of sending him to college, he did a uh, training with uh, several people and learned how to be a trim carpenter. He has his own business. He has 10 employees. He's provided for his family. He's very uh, successful. And then I have one son uh, studying to be a doctor. Another one's working on his doctorate in chemistry. Now remember, this didn't come from me. My husband is a scientist. Uh, one is where has a master's in organ performance, one a master's in violin, and one is a nutritionist. So I have a, a lot of variety in what they did, but just want to encourage you. I know sometimes people think, can your kids go to college if they've been homeschooled? Yes. And actually, some schools are very friendly because they like the work ethic. They like the character in homeschoolers. Um, so just thankful that, that I could share with you. And it's interesting hearing uh, different different experiences each of us have had. Becky, your mic is off. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Man, y'all missed something really good. <laughs> We just want to open up. Thank, thank you all, first of all. The, those stories brought back a lot of memories to me and just so many moments where I was just like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so some very common experiences. But um, we want to open up this time for you. You can type your um, questions that you may have in the chat box. And um, Tammy's going to kind of facilitate that. Uh, you can even, if, if you're on camera and you want to wave and say, I've got a question, that'll work too. However, unmute yourself, you know, we're, we're pretty uh, flexible here, but we would love to answer any questions that you have. Okay, we already have a question. Um, All right. What are co-ops? And that comes from Christina. All right. Uh, uh, yes, I'll answer that because I, I mentioned it. We had five, six moms uh, and we each took what our strength was and we would teach that to all the kids and then they would rotate in through the different, you know, like maybe one teacher was love science. She'd teach science. Um, maybe another teacher did the English. So we helped each other out. And I did that through different times. Does that, is that good, Becky? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Cindy and Gretchen, we were in a little kindergarten co-op. Do you remember? Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Yes, yeah. that was so a lot fun. Of fun. <laughs> it was fun. We would meet every other Friday and just do something fun. I have a funny story. I I don't have things like this don't happen to me very much. But I was sitting in church one Sunday, and I was just thinking, you know, it'd be so fun to teach a, a high school math to a homeschool family that, that the mom doesn't feel very good in math because I love math, you know, and um. I went out of church and uh, uh, Rachel Hatcliffe and Bill Hatcliffe came up to me and said, Cindy, have you ever thought about like teaching like um, some kids math, like maybe like our kids math? And I was like, yes. You know, and so I did that for, you know, I taught the Haynes and the Hatcliffe's um, and they would just come over to my house and we, I taught them geometry in seventh grade. So we did things like that. It's a great way to have community and help yeah, each other. That's what I was going to say. I think it, it also, it's so fun for moms because you don't feel so isolated. You have these other people yeah. that you can. Yeah. yeah. Tammy, we have another question. Um, let me see. Did your kids take the ACT? It's hard to hear you there, Tammy. Oh, did your kids take the ACT or SAT? And did you have any issues preparing them for those tests? And that comes from Carrie. I know my daughters took both because they say if you're English bent, you take the SATs, but I heard if you're more math bent, I don't know if that's true, but they both did fine on it. And, and as a matter of fact, the library has some resources on our tutor.com resource that we have, Tammy, on the website um, that has a lot of ACT prep questions and things like that. So, um, but how about you guys, the rest of you? Did you do anything in particular to prepare for the ACT or SAT or anything? Um, we mainly just did stuff, like we bought the ACT book and the SAT book and we, um, they did take both, but they both decided they liked the ACT, the, all three of them decided they liked the ACT the best, but that was strictly because 
on the ACT, you didn't get counted off the wrong answers in the SAT, you did. And they said it stressed them out to decide whether to answer the question or not, if they were unsure. But um, they all did fine. And um, I had one, one of my daughters was doing, ex did well on the ACT, did really well, but she just needed that one point to get her um, a scholarship. And so um, we did, we got our tutor for five weeks uh, just in English, just to, and that was her best subject, but she had started going down for some reason. I don't know, but anyway, it, so that got her to the point and, um, you know, so we did do that for, for her and, um, but yeah, they did fine on the ACT. I, I remember being scared to death of my first child took the ACT because I felt like I was, I felt like I was on trial, you know, this was going to condemn me, but, um, but they did fine. So. That was our report card. <laughs> it was. It's so crazy, though, because not everyone tests well, so, you know. That. One thing I want to mention, too, that I think is helpful is as you're going along to start your transcripts, don't wait till high school. So oh, that's a good idea. I yeah. didn't do that in the first one, but I learned because <laughs> I didn't have a transcript ready when he was ready to go to college. But the other ones, I just used the same format of format online, and I just every year we filled it in, so that made it easy. Um, Lisa, actually, you just touched on that. Uh, Keisha would love to know more about creating transcripts. Gretchen, um, you're pretty current with that one, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, um, uh, the Czech website, it's a homeschool group, Christian Home Educators Connection. Um, even if you're not a member, you can go to that website and there is, I think it's under homeschool information, there's a section about transcripts. And honestly, I haven't read it lately, but I think there's some links about how you can create them. And there's definitely online um, uh, information, but on that um, Czech website, there's some um, transcript information. Um, and I, I often uh, look at the Mississippi Department of Education mm -hmm. and what the requirements are just to make sure, you know, cause I've been doing high school for years, like just to make sure it doesn't change or whatever. I wanna make sure I'm current with what's required. And um, um, so we just take the classes that, you know, are required. By the, by the state, basically. When, I, that when as well, I, because they added a science well, along the year, so it's good to keep, keep track of that. Yeah. They added that you had to take one more science. And when I was doing it too, um, I think the Czech website had a link to that um, back then, so oh, I don't know if, if they yeah. still do or not. I think, I think there are some links. I should have read it today, but I, um, I think there are some links there. Yeah. All right, um, Tammy? We have another question. Um, this is from Greta. Does anyone have any experience, advice, or recommendations for foreign language teaching? Her children are currently in a Spanish immersion school, and she would love to continue to foster that if she chooses to pull them from their public charter school. I did not have great success in teaching a foreign language. We tried Rosetta Stone. I think my daughter knows how to say hola, and that's about it. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm out on this one. <laughs> I am too. We did an online course, and it, it didn't work out well, but I mean, they got their credit, but it didn't work out that well. But somebody else? Hmm? I know that there is one or two, or one or two, um, foreign language teachers that um, teach in, I, I actually meant to mention this earlier, but there's some groups that offer um, like classes for like seven through 12, then you can take one class, you can take three or whatever. There's some um, foreign language, but I'm not sure as far as what you were, um, whoever asked that question, I'm not sure it would be, um, I think it's more to, to get the high school requirement, you know, the first and second year of Spanish or whatever. Um, so that's all. I'm, I was going to say that we took online Latin for several years because I couldn't teach it. But like my daughter, she, uh, she was fluent in Spanish and Japanese. So she taught homeschoolers uh, those subjects. So I think that if you ask on uh, like 
the check website or reach one of the homeschool websites and ask that you might be able to get a resource because I'm sure there's other students. I mean, she was fluent in it. And uh, so I'm sure there's other people that would have, you know, that could be able to teach in that, in that way. I know our uh, Madison Library website has rocket languages, and, but I don't think it teaches fully from start to finish, but it's a good supplement for learning languages. But um, yeah, I never, I never found, <laughs> figured that one out. So. But she's graduated from college and it's okay to let people know that publicly that she probably can't speak her two years worth of high school Spanish at this point. <laughs> Tammy, do we have another one? We do. This is from Christina. What was the transition like for children who started as homeschoolers and then went to public, <clears throat> excuse me, or private school? Did your child have to test to get placed into a grade? And how did he or she adjust to the change? I think I'm the only one that can do that one. Um, she did have to test and she did fine on the test. Thankfully, this was, she was going into um, Madison Middle School and um, you know, I'm sure it depends on each child. She went from a class of one to, you know, Madison Middle. And it, it was an adjustment, but she really did it well. And then decided after two years there, great school, great experiences, but wanted something smaller. And she, we ended up going to Canton Academy. And that was really her niche. And she could really bloom there. That It was nice to be in that smaller environment. But she used the fact on her... Um, all of her college uh, applications that, you know, the fact that she can adjust because how many kids have homeschooled, public school and private school, you know, and she, uh, you know, got some, was on teams on both and got some awards and, you know, um, and really excelled in all three. And, and um, so that was a, it was a really good experience for us. Now, my oldest, you know, went from homeschooling to Ole Miss. <laughs> That's probably the biggest jump of all. But uh, I, I would say that was that was especially hard for her at first. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it was not a problem for us. You know, she was nervous, but some kids came alongside her and, and were really sweet to her and everything. So my kids went one year and they had to take the test as well. And uh, it went well for them, too. It was kind of funny. I was, I was told my oldest son, I said, the only thing is about this school is that I don't have any time to be with them. I, you know, they go to school all day and then they come home and they do their homework. And my son said, well, mom, that's what most parents want. Most parents aren't like you and they want to create what they're doing. So <laughs> I'm kind of different that way. But yeah, all my kids loved college. They uh, really made that transition well. But I, that, that's the only one is college and then the one year school. Mm -hmm. All right, we have another one? Yes, we have a message from Keegan. Uh, she says, hi, Keegan Fox here from uh, 16 WAPT. She wanted to thank everyone for letting her join the meeting tonight. She does have a few questions, um, if you don't mind answering those for her. Uh, we have three of them. Is there increased interest in homeschooling due to COVID-19? Uh, number two, what would you say to parents who are considering it? And number three, what should parents do if they want more information um, on homeschooling their children? I, I think there is, a, there are probably a lot of people thinking of the homeschool option. That's what even gave me the idea to, to do this again. We did have this panel last year, but I wasn't even thinking about it doing it again. I was on a Facebook page of Madison Moms and a mom said, you know, I'm really thinking about the homeschooling option and, but I don't, I don't have a clue, you know, how to do this. So I, I think it is out there on people's minds. Um, and really, you know, just the things that we've been talking about for advice for people in get, having to get into it kind of in a little emergency situation very quickly just to take their time and and uh, research as much as they can and in the meantime if, if they uh, their kids are reading books or you know doing some science experiments or just whatever while you're trying to get it together but don't rush into it you know just um find something that works for you and then then go ahead and, and get started um i don't remember what the other question was okay um the third one uh, you, the third one was, what should parents do if they want more information about homeschooling? Um, you can come to the Homeschool Teachers Lounge on Tuesday, um, you know, and uh, those, um, the homeschooling group check, which is C-H-E-C, 
um, and Reach. Is that R E A C H E? Mm. Yeah, um, they are great resources uh, to. And and I know Joining Check. It don't, you don't even have to be involved, but you can at least get access to their full website for back many years ago. It was about twenty five dollars. I don't know what it is now, but um, but and just talking to moms and uh, you know that that have done it is is really the best way. Do y'all have any other advice for that? I would say, go ahead. go ahead, Cindy. Oh, I would just say, you know, at least my experience when I was thinking about homeschooling, I found most, you know, homeschooling moms were more than willing to talk about it and give you information. I, I could still remember, and I wouldn't suggest this as much. Now, there used to be a homeschool conference, and they had a big curriculum fair, and that was a really fun place to go to. But honestly, nowadays, the, it's so much is online that the curriculum fairs are kind of small. But I can just remember Tammy Haynes just taking me you know, alongside and helping me through things. And so I think a homeschooling mom that will help. And um, they can kind of get you there's some catalogs out there that will just say first grade and have everything and second grade and have everything and I kind of did that at first so I can make sure I was getting all the subjects because I wasn't sure what all the subjects were but go ahead Cheryl. I was just going to recommend that when I first moved here 17 years ago I was already homeschooling but I contacted uh, there's people you can contact on the check website and it was so helpful because they told me these are the laws in Mississippi. This, you know, they just gave me a lot of overall information as a new homeschooler in the area. So I think that would be helpful. There's also um, an organization that's MHEA, Mississippi Home Educators Association, and they're kind of over all of Mississippi. And uh, I think it just might be MHEA.org, but, um, Lisa Barber, her husband's, and you, if you contact Lisa Barber, she'll give you more information than you ever wanted to know. I can promise you that. So, um, but that's a good resource too. It, it has all the laws on there and the rules and that kind of thing. Right. Tammy, we have another? Do yeah. uh, from Sarah. Has anyone used teaching textbooks? I have not. I loved it. I it was so fun. What What do you think, Cheryl? I, I, I thought it was great. I, did too. I really liked it about, I used Saxon for all my first ones, but they didn't, oh, Becky, what's it called when they write the whole problem out for you? Oh yeah, they, I don't know, but they gave you all the on that disc and, and how to do it step by step. I needed that and that was so good that, uh, that's why I like teaching textbooks because it, I don't think it was as hard as the other curriculum, but right. it did outline how to do every problem and that was really helpful. <laughs> And it was kind of fun too. I mean, they had little characters and you yeah. know, the kids loved it, you know? Yeah, my kids liked it. Yeah. Okay. We, we have, have um, Carrie said there are some immersion language classes on outschool.com and she loves outschool. So great. Add. Great. Uh, see. Kisa said, Greta, there's a lady that teaches Spanish to kids. I think she's in the Brandon area. It's called the Spanish Institute, she believes, and you can probably find her on Facebook. I used to have her card, uh, but she lost it, so that might be something you want to check into. Um, Carrie says that I think Yvette Ray still teaches Spanish at the Village, Mississippi, in Ridgeland too, but I'm not sure. She's really great. The Village, Mississippi is a co-op anyone can go to. And then Kisa says, Carrie, she does still teach at the Village for elementary ages. We're having trouble hearing you again, Tammy. Oh, I'm sorry. Carrie said she does still teach at the say. Village for elementary ages, and she's not sure about the older kids. And then Carrie put MDE has a website for homeschoolers now. We can even download and print the enrollment form. And she also uh, gave us the attachment where you can get to that. Um, let's see. He's, uh, excuse me, Carrie said, we have a lot of homeschool groups on Facebook for Mississippi now. That's where most of us get the information, share information and meet families. And then the last comment is from Kisa. What uh, sequence of science and math do you all recommend for high school? Uh, for science, 
we did, all my kids did like physical science in eighth grade, but that is a high school credit. Ninth grade biology, 10th grade chemistry, 11th grade um, physics, and then some of my, let's see, some of mine just didn't ha need another science because that's four right there. Um, but I, I actually, my youngest was talking about, you know, we were talking about her high school years and she might do like anatomy and physiology, uh, maybe at homes. So like I, I did want to mention like my kids have a good transition from homeschool into college besides outside classes is dual enrolling at homes or Heinz, any community college, their senior year, that kind of helped them bridge the gap into college. And like, I was talking with my youngest, she might take like anatomy and physiology her senior year at homes and be dual credit. And I, Cindy, do you want to say about the math? Cause yeah, on the math, um, like it's, um, Algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus. And you can do, I mean, depending on your child, you could do uh, algebra one in eighth grade if, if they're math minded. Some schools of thought think that you should do um, algebra one, then algebra two, then geometry, because you know algebra two is really more of a continuation from algebra one. And I actually think that makes a whole lot of sense. But the flip side of that is that on the ACT, there's a lot of geometry. So you kind of, so that's really, I think, why the schools do geometry. So you can kind of get that before you get the ACT. So we actually did it the very traditional way where we did algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and pre-calculus. And I'm not, does Mississippi still, do they require four maths or three maths? Is it four? Four. Four. So yeah, you will have to, you don't have to do pre-calculus. I think you could do something like algebra three or something like that. But um, the first credit does start with algebra one, so. And one other option as you're going through, if you want to get college credits, it's, it's called club testing. It's like $75 a test. So different, my kids took different one. They would go in and they would take algebra one they didn't have to take algebra in college then my daughter took biology she didn't have to take biology in college so it you can and my last daughter um she had got a whole year of, of testing and and so she went in as a sophomore so yes. as you're taking the class as soon as you finish the class if you take the test you usually can pass it and then that way you have extra college credits okay. all right um, we then have a follow-up question from Kisa. She said, are there any downsides of dual enrollment? Money. <laughs> That's the only downside. <laughs> that, that we didn't do dual enrollment, and this was the only reason why, was because um, if, I think if it's like an 21 on the ACT, you can actually go to homes for free uh, after you graduate. But if you take those courses in um, high school, you have to pay for them out. And that's the only reason that we didn't do it as I'm like a cheapskate and I didn't want to pay for it. But, but when I sent my girls off to college, I kind of wished I had because I was freaking out, wondering if they were really going to know how to do college. But they all did fine. They, they, they both did really well at MC. So... I didn't see any downside for dual enrolling for us. You know, it was good to get your feet wet. You know? We have a question from Megan. Do homeschoolers have any required testing to make sure they are on track? And did you have a dedicated room in your house for homeschooling or did um, the supplies take over your house? <laughs> <laughs> um, there was no required testing. You just had to tell them every year, I am homeschooling. And, and back when I was doing it, and just kind of vaguely say what curriculum you were using or something. And that was about it. You know, is it still the same? Yes. So, yeah. And uh, <laughs> our kitchen was our homeschool room. But yeah, it, it, when you're building the May Mayflower, it can get messy. <laughs> it can go all over the place. <laughs> our, um I did, starting about third grade, I would do um, the standardized tests for my kids just to, it, part of it started out so I could kind of see where they were and um, 
but my kids actually weren't the greatest test takers because I remember seeing their standardized test scores um, and levels and thinking, well, she did fine when we did it at the kitchen table. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it was just, it, oh, it can, you just can't beat yourself up about it, but I liked giving it to him just to, so I could kind of see where they were. And also, you know, they are going to be taking tests at some point they're going to take an ACT, you know, or maybe, I guess they don't have to, but, um, and yeah, we did not have a homeschool room and, um, mainly the kitchen was where we are, where we were a lot. I was going to say on my first ones, I didn't have them take a lot of tests. My last ones, I had them take more tests and they were very glad. Um, I, I think it does give you practice, uh, because mine would, they could get A's on all their tests, but it's a different kind when you're studying for a test than when you're taking something that is, is a very large subject and you have to answer that you can't exactly study for. And I think it's good practice. So my last six, we did what Gretchen did. I don't know if we started at third grade, but every year we had a test. I, and I thought, I just did it because I think it was good for them to be able to learn how to do multiple choice. And yes. uh, my husband, he's like this amazing test taker. So he did work with each one, uh, just went through a, little, a few of the problems. And I think if, if they struggle with that, it's good to have someone come along. Someone that's good at it, they can just sit there and um, come alongside them and help them figure out some test taking tips so they get better at it. Yeah, we, um, we like took, we start taking an ACT test in the 10th grade, like the, they're, um, spring to 10th grade, kind of see how they do. And then the senior, their, their, their junior year, because that's when you're trying to get that ACT in, that was part of their schooling was they just, they had to take ACT test on uh, math test on Monday, ACT English test on Tuesday. We, we would, they would take that just to kind of get them and used to it, you know, and uh, we, what we did is like the first week, they just took it. But then we started being at timed because that was, that was probably the biggest thing my girls had to learn was taking it in the time that it needed to be. So that we did do that and it did help a lot. So anything else, Tammy? We have a comment from Carrie. She said, yes, just the enrollment card turned in by September 15th for ages six through 16 and say something like curriculum appropriate for whatever grade and no details needed. Um, also, Kisa said the Seton, S-E-T-O-N, testing website is good for ordering and administering various standardized tests. And check also usually uh, offers annual testing. So, all right. And that's all we have so far. Well, does anyone else have another question? You're free to unmute if you want to, if we didn't answer something that you'd already asked fully or anything else comes to mind. Well, I'm so glad that everybody could be here tonight and Gretchen and Cheryl and Cindy, thank you so much. It's just great to be with you guys again and not be calling you in a panic or anything. <laughs> oh, goodness. I love these women. <laughs> But, uh, Becky and Gretchen and I, we had, all had uh, girls that were the same age in church, so they were always friends for a long time. So. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and again, if you want the homeschool resource that I have, uh, it's just a document with different things that they suggest um, that they've compiled, the, the panel here, and uh, you can just email me. And also, if you want to be part of that um, homeschool teacher's lounge on, the, on a Tuesday, it's just something I'll see if, if it's a need, if people want to come, great. You know, if not, that's okay. But I thought I would start it weekly, especially for these moms who might be really nervous starting for the first time in this pandemic time and, and have a lot of questions. And then we'll just go from there and see what the needs of the group are. So you can, it's something you can come in and out of. But, um, but my email again is b b o w e n at mcls dot ms, and I'm so glad everybody could be here tonight. Yes, and uh, Christina and Kisa said thank you so much. That they really appreciated it. Also, Carrie. So thank you are you. so welcome. Thank 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 all the panelists. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye.